हेलो फ्रेंड्स दिस इज डी के गौतम एंड वेलकम्स यू ऑल इन टेक इंटरव्यू पॉइंट सो इन दिस वीडियो आई एम गोइंग टू कवर फुल ए एस पी डॉट नेट पेज लाइफ साइकिल सो वी नीड टू अंडरस्टैंड ए एस पी डॉट नेट पेज लाइफ साइकिल बिकॉज इट विल हेल्प यू टू इन रियल टाइम एप्लीकेशन सो वी नीड टू अंडरस्टैंड बिकॉज वी नीड टू अंडरस्टैंड वेयर द कोड इज रिक्वायर सो लेट्स गेट स्टार्ट बिकॉज गोइंग टू स्टार्ट इफ यू टिल नाउट इन नॉट सब्सक्राइब माई यूट्यूब चैनल and please subscribe my youtube channel so when i will upload new videos you will get notification for that video so as we know that our as site is start from first of all you send a request you open a browser and a send a request to that request is executed by the iis and iis loads iset.dll and process this request on the basis of extension never as dot new there are some extensions like aspx or ascx like that so this extension extension loads the is asp net underscore isap dot dll and asp net underscore isap dot dll generates http runtime class and assign it to purple process http runtime class generates http application object which picks one application domain from application pool and http application objects create the instance of page object and invoke process request method after that initiate the asp.net page life cycle and generates html response so it will the asp.net page life cycle so we need to understand some stages of asp.net page life cycle so guys this is all about our asp dot page life cycle so as you know that in page request some in general page life cycle some stages are there in first stage is page request the page request occurs before the page life cycle begins when the page is requested by the user asp dot net determines whether the page is needs to be passed or end compile so or whether a cached version of the page can be sent to the response without running the page so in the next state start so in the start stage in page properties such as the request and response are set at this stage the page also determines whether the request is post back or new request so and sets the is post back property in this stage it will set the property is page is Uh, is post back or new request okay so first in initialization okay. so in the du in during page initialization controls on the page are available and each controls unique id property is set any themes are also applied to the page if the current current request is post back the post back data has not yet been loaded and control properties values have not been restored to the value from queue state okay so in the load in the load state in, during load if the current request is a post back control properties are loaded with information and recovers from queue state and control state in the after that in the uh, validation so in during validation the validates method of all validator controls is called which sets the is valid property of individual validator controls and of the page okay so in the next post back event handling if the request is post back any event handlers are called after that rendering so before rendering view state is saved for the page and all controls and during the rendering phase the page calls the render method for each control providing a text writer that writes its output to the output stream of the page's response properties after that it unload in the unload unload is called after the page has been fully rendered sent to the client and is ready to be discarded at this point page properties such as respond response and request are unloaded 
and any cleanup is performed so this is our stages so this is our fully asp.net page lifecycle i have covered here so in the next session i will cover page lifecycle events so guys thank you for watching this videos for more videos please subscribe my youtube channel please like and share this video and subscribe my youtube channel